Does God want you healed? And the answer to that question is yes, God wants you healed. He doesn't have a will for you to be sick. He's not going to teach you a lesson by sickness and disease. God does not teach with destruction. God teaches with instruction, and his instructions are found in his word. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 17, that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variance, and he does not change as a shifting shadow. God is not the author of sickness and disease. How do we know that? Well, first and foremost, in the Garden of Eden, when he created Adam and Eve, when he placed them there, there were no cancer wards, there were no hospitals, there were no need for any doctors or nurses or rehabilitation centers. And when he's going to recreate the heavens and the earth, he's not going to be placing any hospitals. He's not going to be placing any cancer wards or children's hospitals or rehabilitation centers. All those things came when Satan came on the scene. And we can clearly see this in Job chapter 2, verse 7. And the Bible says that Satan left forth from the presence of God and smote Job's with bulls from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. Satan is the author of sickness and disease. And God is the author of your healing. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that is the devil, the enemy, the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you can have it more abundantly. So the three reasons why God wants you healed, write these down. Number one, his name is Jehovah Rapha. And someone's name displays their nature. His name is, not was, not is going to be. His name is Jehovah Rapha. And that is found in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, where he says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. And has he changed? No. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he said that I am the Lord God and I change not. We don't serve the great I was. We don't serve the great I am coming. We serve the great I am. He is still the healer today, and he still is Jehovah Rapha. It says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, For this reason was the Son of Man made manifest, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Jesus went around healing those who were sick, not making people sick to teach them a lesson, or making them sick to trust him more, or making them sick so they can praise God for their healing. He's not a child abuser. He is a loving and caring God. And check this out, Luke chapter 13. Let me read this to you. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit, and she had been bent over for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called out to her and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. And oh, how she praised God. See, God didn't get the glory when she was sick. God got the glory when she was healed. Jesus was the one that made her well. Jesus was the answer to her infirmity. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went around doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. The key word there is all. Everyone that came to Jesus seeking a healing, seeking a miracle, receive it. There was not one person that Jesus rejected and told him to get lost because healing is who he is. Number two, we can see that sickness is the work of the devil. From Luke chapter 13, look at verse 16. This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. She was held by Satan. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 22, there was another man who was blind and mute, and he couldn't speak. And when Jesus casted the devil out of that man, his vision returned, and so did his speech. There was also an epileptic boy, many other blind people, many other mute people, that when they were free, it was because of a demonic spirit. That's because the Bible tells us that all the people who were sick were oppressed by the work of the devil. So Satan is a source of all the disease, and Jesus is a source to healing. But not only that, when he commissioned the disciples to go, in Luke chapter 10, he said this. He said, when you go to town to town, village to village, and proclaim the message of the gospel, heal all the sick. This is in verse 9. And tell them that the kingdom of God has now 
come. Sickness is a work of the devil, but God's kingdom brings the healing. Healing is included in our salvation. Jesus the Savior is not separate from Jesus the healer. And after you received him as your Savior, you can receive him as your healer. And God's order for blessing is given in Psalms 103, verses 1 to 3. And the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, I tell myself, and forget not his benefits, who heals all my disease and forgives all of my trespasses. Just as Jesus is a Savior, just as he forgives of sin, he heals your disease. It's all one and the same. When he was on his way to the cross to fulfill the mandate and the mission, why he came, he decided to take a pit stop at the whipping post to take 39 lashes on his back. If healing was not important to the believer, he should have went straight for the cross. But he went there for you and for me. That the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that he personally bore our sins on his body, that we might die and be made righteous. And by his stripes, we have been made whole. It was his mission and mandate to not only forgive the world of sin, but to remove the oppression and grip that the enemy had over his people. Galatians 3.13, For Christ has redeemed us from all the curses of the law, having been made a curse for our wrongdoings. For scripture says, Curse is anyone who is hung on a tree. So what is the curse of the law that he took on his body for you and for me? And we can find all the curses of the law in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68. And some of those curses, we see oppression and anxiety. We see mental torment. We see sleeplessness. We see long-standing affliction in the body. We see generational sicknesses and general sickness and disease. God wants you healed, and he wants you healed today. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same way he went healing people all throughout the Gospels. The same way that the apostles went town to town, village to village, healing all those who were sick and oppressed. Is the same way that God wants you healed today. Do you have any sickness or disease? Let me quickly pray for you. Put your hand on the afflicted part of your body. If there's more than one thing wrong with you, just place one hand on your forehead and one hand to heaven. And receive this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are the God that heals us. I thank you that your name is Jehovah Rapha. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for any single person sick under the sound of my voice. Any area that they're unwell, make them whole. Anything too far gone, too far ruptured, Father, do a creative miracle and make them brand new. I declare that they're healthy and I declare that they're made whole by your precious blood that was shed on the cross. And Father, touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Renew their strength and let them serve as a testimony of your healing power. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God wants you healed. And just thank him right there where you're at. Thank him that you received the healing. God bless you and watch this. Thank you for watching. And if you care about your spiritual growth, hit that subscribe button to follow more. Also, join me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 9 p.m. New York time where I do live Bible studies. And since you've been impacted, and if it's in your heart to sow or partner with the ministry, description is down below. God bless you and see you in the next video.